Hello, YouTube. Bald man building an airplane. Um, so, last full regular video like this uh, was kind of a me whining about the laser cut parts. Um, I figured it was time for an update. Um, and my plan of attack. So, Vans um, published some information on their website, posted it to Facebook and the Vans Air Force forums to sort of say, hey, yeah, we know this is an issue. Um, and it looks like they have a really good plan. The gist of it is that um, Vans has a plan a very comprehensive plan on what they're going to do about this. Uh, they posted it on their website and a few of the so other social media um, or rather builder places online um, so that uh, you know hopefully the word can get out. Um, full disclosure, uh, I've been in direct contact with Greg Hughes from Vans um, he posted on the previous video uh, about this topic and uh, I've been chatting with him about a couple of things um, uh, regarding this whole laser cut stuff. Um, so my opinion may be different than someone else's. When I talk to Greg, his passion for this whole process um, really tells me that they're gonna do it N not that they wouldn't do it but like they're gonna do it right um, it may take them a while right vans isn't amazon they don't know exactly who got which part on which date um they they just don't right it's a small shop and so they've got to like try to find the people that were affected you know they're going to tell everybody who's affected and they got to find those people so based on his passion though I really think that they're going to do the right thing in this and it's going to take a while, but it's going to get all sorted out. Um, so they're, they're basically saying that, um, everything from here on is going here on out is going back to punch press, which is good. Um, they've been doing punch press parts for years with no issues. These issues only started really cropping up when they changed the process. So we go back to the old process. Um, there's another statement on here that says, they will replace any laser cut parts which are dimpled by the builder during the construction process upon request, as soon as they are able to do so. Because what they're doing, and this is from another part of it, is that they are going to recreate a ton of parts. It's great that they're doing that, it's just like, blows my mind at how much it might cost to even do that it's I, I couldn't imagine um, but anyway um, if you want your parts replaced um, that had that were dimpled that were laser cut you'll be able to get them replaced I don't know when um, they published a list of some very specific parts primarily spars in the empennage and Oh, excuse me. And some flap and aileron spars. Um, because those carry a lot of loads. So they're taking a, a attack of, let's look at the safety items first and make sure we have those in stock and we can replace those as people need. And, um, and then we'll work on the less safety items like my seat ribs or my baggage ribs. I got a report from someone in a Slack group that said I called the factory for replacement baggage rib. Um, and they said the back order date was like January of 2024. This is, it's what, July 9th today? So that says to me um, that they're prioritizing the safety items first, right? Spars and maybe bulkheads and things like that 
but yeah, so if, if you want to get something replaced, you'll be able to get it replaced. So that takes me to what am I going to do? Well, over here is what was constructed. I just realized this video is not straight. Um, that was the whole chapter 26 and some, well, so what you can see there is, is pretty clear. I separated the skin from the baggage ribs. I took out the gear brace below it because the gear brace is supposed to handle more loads. Um, it's got some, you know, real thick parts here that, uh, that handle some reasonable loads and a lot of the number 30 ribbit um, dimples had cracked so I decided that's got to go. Um, I haven't even contacted the factory on um, what to do about that piece yet but I knew that it had to go. Um, I also have I have a feeling based on the press release that the spars in my ailerons and flaps are affected. Um, I did some inspection in my flaps and they seem okay. I don't see cracks along any of the rivets dimpled on the flap spar, but I can't get into the ailerons. So I don't know for sure if those were laser cut or not. I'm gonna look back at my videos and maybe, 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 maybe I recorded whether I removed blue from them or not. If I removed blue, they were punched, I'm happy. Um, if I don't have that video, then what I'm going to do, since that's an assembled piece, I don't really want to pull the spar out of that, right? It's just, I, I'm probably going to get an email that says you were affected in this wing kit. But I don't think I want to pull the spar out of that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to wait. And it sucks to wait. But that's a completed disassembly. I don't want to tear it apart. I'm going to wait for the testing. So Vans did load testing on an RV12 IS stabilator for something. I don't remember what, but they ran it for like something like 30,000 flight hours of est you know, estimated loads and there were no issues. So what I hope they do is something similar for these ailerons, flaps, elevators, etc., that have the dimpled laser cut parts to see for sure what's gonna happen so they're gonna do testing on it and i'm hoping what happens is they say that you know they'll come back with the results from that testing and that will tell me whether i need to tear it tear into my ailerons or not um but chances are they might be okay um maybe they'll see some smoked rivets or whatever um but we'll see for my seat ribs over here i'm probably gonna do nothing because the seat ribs don't carry a much load. Um, the baggage ribs, same thing, don't carry much load. But on any load carrying piece, like a bulkhead, like this bulkhead right here, I didn't see any cracks form in this, but I had to take it out anyway, um, because these other pieces that I had stated um, had some cracks in them, and those connect the lower bulkhead, the lower rear bulkhead, up to the to the skin and to the rear seat attach or the seat back attach and all that and I was just like nah those have got to go to um so I'm being pragmatic about it I'm looking at things in the build that I as the builder sort of understand like where or not loads are going to be you know dump you know placed in the aircraft and um you know sort of say all right is this an okay place if there is a crack will it be okay yeah, I know that's not okay for everybody, but that's okay for me. Um, because if it starts to be a problem, you know, that vibration, that rivet's going to start to smoke, and you'll see it on inspection, on pre-flight, on annual, before it becomes a problem. So, you know, we're not going to see airplanes falling out of the sky unless someone's doing an absolutely terrible job of inspecting them, which can happen, right? But just to be clear... If you're properly flying your aircraft, you're also properly pre-flighting your aircraft. You're also properly taking it in for an annual or doing the annual yourself if you've built it yourself or having someone else do it, whatever. 
and in looking for those things, looking for those signs of wear, looking for those problems before they become problems. Um, so that, so that, that's my take on it. Your take on it may be different. If you're building in, building one of these airplanes, you may say everything has to be perfect first time. That's fine. That's your prerogative. That's your airplane. Good for you. I'm happy for you. You just might be waiting a little bit longer. Um, so anyway, that's kind of, um, you know, what they've said, my plan, um, extra tidbit of information. Um, as part of my conversations with Craig, I've been, um, I've been asked to send some parts in because for example, my gear brace that had so many, um, bad dimples with cracks in them once the rivets went in, um, he asked me to send that in and I sent in one of these, one of these guys here with a test coupon, just like this that had cracks. Um, so the, uh, the engineers are going to do some analysis on that because they wanted to see it from the field, right? They can do their builds, but they've known how to do these builds for 50 years. So they know really well how to do them. You know, Ryan Schmo in his garage may not do as good of a job making clean dimples or whatever, even if he does buy the Cleveland dyes and whatever. So um, they're look, you know, I, I, I'm not saying they're looking for more data points, but it's clear they want to have a little bit more information before they make any conclusions on this. So, yeah, that's it for me. I'm basically in the same boat as anybody else with cracked um, dimples on their uh, on their parts. It's a waiting game, but I really think that they're going to get it right. I have faith in them. See you later.